All right, there's some things I want to talk about before we get into the re-gear video. Uh, the next video you'll see, it'll be me re-gearing the Jeep. But um, there's some things that you need to know in some terms and how things work before we get into the re-gearing video because I'm going to be talking about some things um, in the re-gearing video that you might not know what it is. And I don't want to have a hour-long video on a re-gear video explaining this and that's why I'm going ahead and doing it in separate videos so you can go back and you don't have to rewind and go through a bunch of timelines. You can just go back and check out uh, what you need to. So if you haven't checked out the other videos on re-gearing, I do recommend going back to my channel and checking that out. But today we're going to be talking about the gears, the terms, and what needs to be done. And as you see, i got stuff laying here and uh, we're going to be talking about some certain things today. So you want to watch this video. It's very important. So the first thing we're going to be starting with is actually the pinion. This is what goes inside your housing behind the ring gear. Um, this is an old pinion that I have. It's a little rusted. Yours is not going to be rusted. So you're going to have a um, yoke that sets on these splines. You're going to have a seal. The, the yoke goes on and you'll have a little washer and then the nut. Um, as you can see, this particular setup has this washer here behind the bearing. Now, when it comes to a pinion, this will be on the back side of your housing, the real long uh, tail of your housing, the tail housing. And this will be, like I said, inside behind your ring gear, inside the diff pan. Okay, this is a clearance fit bearing. So this will come off uh, pretty easily, actually. So when you take this off, you have you know your little washer goes behind there. This is a clearance fit bearing. So you'll have to pound your pinion out with a punch but this will come off it doesn't get pressed on by a press and then you'll have your crush sleeve and then you'll have your main bearing um, this is the pinion bearing now usually there is a shim behind this pinion bearing um, i always start out with the stock shim on the new pinion and what that really does is it gets me super close now when you use the stock shim on the new pinion, I just go ahead and put it on and put the bearing on. Usually it gets me super close. After that, I will shim behind the race, which the race, as you can see, this is how it'd be in the housing. This one's a little too small um, because I couldn't find the correct one, but this goes up over there like this. This is what this, this rate, this race goes over this bearing and it rides in this bearing um, it goes inside and rides on it so when it's in the housing you'll have the crush sleeve and you'll have then you run it through your housing and then you'll have this bearing that rides in there as you can see it goes over that like that and then you'll have your washer, and then you have your yoke and all that. So you have an idea how that works. Usually my pinion is a hair too shallow, and what I'll do is shim behind this race. And what that does is it pulls out the pinion to the ring gear. Um, I've never had a problem with that. Both ways are acceptable. Um, if you're really nervous and you don't want to, if you're afraid to risk it and you think that pinion shim is too deep, just go ahead and put your bearing on and then use all your shims behind the race. Super easy to do. Um, like I said, you can use these shims. These shims go behind the race like this. So uh, you can properly set your pinion depth. So after we got that out of the way and you understand how that stuff works, you have your pinion set up. Now, a lot of people are confused on what a crush sleeve is, and uh, basically it sets the preload on your bearings. Kind of like this, you'll have the races right here, and this is your crush sleeve, and this usually slides up a lot farther, and you put your yoke on, you tighten your nut down. The reason why you have to get this correct, because when you crush this crush sleeve, you actually push these bearings together, and it gets tighter in the race. 
If it's too loose, it's going to probably eat your gears. Uh, if it's too tight, it'll wear your bearings out. That's why you have to use a inch pound torque wrench to get this correct. Um, so you have to make sure you know how to use one of those and you have one. I have a video on my channel what tools you're going to need, but that is basically how your pinion works. Now, a lot of times you can get a crush sleeve eliminator and use that in which that's super easy. You just use, take your crush sleeve, your use one, you measure what that is and you put your sleeve in there and you put your shims and that's what you get your preload preload from. So basically that's how that works. That's a crush sleeve. If you over crush it, uh, you're going to have to get a new one. So I recommend taking your time. So basically that's how the pinion setup works and that's what it looks like. So super easy, super easy to understand. I just wanted to explain to you how everything works. Now sometimes your pinion will have a big oil slinger and you will have to reuse that if you have one, a great big oil slinger. Um, so make sure you reuse that, but basically that's the only difference that I have. Now the next thing I'm going to be talking about is the ring gear and ring gear patterns. This is your pinion. Um, this is an old one that I have and this is what mates up with your uh, ring gear. And if you don't get this pattern correct, it will chew it up. You could break things and you could have gears run hot and so on and so on. So this pattern is very important and this is what intimidates people to not do a ring gear job. And honestly, it's not that hard. It's just taking the carrier in and out like a hundred times to get it right. Honestly, when I did the re-gear on my Jeep, I've only had the Dana 30 carrier out four times and the rear out, I think three times. Um, that's because the pinion was too shallow and that was with the stock shims. So this is your pinion. We just got done talking about your pinion. So what I want to talk about is the relationship between the pinion and the ring gear. Now, I do have this for, uh, you know, to teach people what is what. Basically, this is the drive side. So if you have a high pinion Dana 30 and a low pinion uh, rear end, this is what you want to go by. This is the drive, side, the drive side. So as you can see, it's kind of, uh, it's like a U shape. That's how I remember things. So I'm going to try to explain things to you to dumb it down a little bit instead of using fancy terms. So I always remember it's like a U shape and on the back side of that U, that's always the drive side. And then you have the coast side and the inside of the U. That's basically dumbing it down so you can understand. Now there is tons and tons of patterns online, what's acceptable and what isn't. A lot of those are false and can cause noise. That's why a lot of people get noise. A lot of people have breakage, uh, excessive heat and excessive wear. That's because they follow those guides and I don't recommend it. So today I'm gonna to be explaining what I go by. So when you're setting up new gears, a brand new set of new gears, you want to go by the drive side when you're setting it up. If you're using a set of used gears, you want to go by the coast side. So now that we understand what side is the drive side and what side is the coast side, so we have the outside of the teeth and we have the inside of the teeth. Now you're going to need some of these terms just in case you want to ask questions on a Facebook form or you're going to call the company or ask somebody. So the outside of the ring gear is called the heel. This is the heel. Okay, when you're looking up patterns, you're going to need to know this too. This is the heel, and the inside toward your carrier is the toe. Okay, so we have the root down in here, down in there. That is the root, and a lot of people call this the top land, um, the crown. I call it the top of the gear to make it simple. So now that we have an understanding of what this is, we can set up our gears. As you can see, I have some patterns scribbled out on this ring gear on the drive side. So when I'm setting up new gears, this is what I go by. So these are the setups that I have to kind of explain to you what goes on. So if your pinion's too deep, it's gonna be too close to the root. And as you can see, I have a lot of, of, of the top of the gear showing. That, that, that shows me that the pinion is too close to the root and as you can see you can see how deep that black marker is okay so we need to make the pinion shallow so we need to take a shim out of this and go a little bit smaller with it and what that usually does is it brings it up to in this area um, so you just want to keep bringing it up till you have just a little bit 
of gear showing on the top. It's not too shallow and it's not too deep. Um, and usually when you do that, the coast side will be the same. Sometimes the coast side will be off a little bit. It'll be this way. Um, by the time you get backlash fixed, it'll be almost center. And keep in mind, you don't adjust the patterning with backlash. So usually your coast side kind of follows along. As you can see, this is way too shallow. Um, so if you go by, uh, you know, where the gear is, it's way too shallow. So what I like to do is once I get in the area of where I want my gear, it's, it's okay, it's centered. This one is super centered where I like it. And a lot of people say, well, you have to get this bubble hamburger bun. I call it the hamburger bun because that's what you're aiming for. You don't want hard lines. You want soft lines all the way around. What I'm aiming for is a little bit to the, t the, the toe. And a lot of people are like, no, you got to have that centered. Um, you know, you got to have it dead center. And which that's a perfect pattern. It really is. But I like to have mine a little bit to the toe. And the reason for that is I'm running big tires and I'm transferring a lot of torque. So when I'm applying that pressure, that gear wants to roll off. So if I go this way towards the toe a little bit, it gives me enough room to really apply torque to this gear and not worry about anything happening to it. And as you can see, the old gear where it was wearing very nicely on the gear, you can see the pattern that it was having. And honestly, it was a touch shallow, um, but it's, it's acceptable. What you don't want is a pattern way off the edge where it's rolling off the edge. You don't want that. Um, you don't want it up here and you, you don't want the coast side up here and you don't want the drive side way down here, vice versa. You want to try, you want to, try to get it as center as possible. And that is, like I said, with the pinion depth. Um, the pinion depth moves it this way and this way. So one of the terms I had a problem with is too shallow or too deep. Nobody could explain to me when I ask which way is too shallow and which way is too deep. So basically if it's too deep, it's too far on the ring gear towards the carrier. This is too deep. This would be your carrier here. If it's too shallow, you're going to be way out here. Okay. So that is how that stuff works together. So you got to mesh this as perfect as possible to get the best pattern as possible. Now, when it comes to backlash, this is what lets the oil in the gear. As you can see how tight this gear is. That means there is absolutely no backlash in this gear. So the farther we move it back, as you can see, I get more backlash. And that will help your pattern center up too. Um, there's some times, like I said, backlash doesn't move your pattern around, but sometimes you get some funky readings. I can't explain that. But there's times where my coast side would be perfect and my drive side would be off a little bit this way or this way. But when I get my backlash in spec, it usually centers all that stuff up pretty nice. So when it comes to backlash, that is how far the ring gear like this is away from the pinion. And then pinion depth is how far it's on the gear towards the carrier like this. All right, now we have all that figured out. Now we can understand how to adjust backlash. We understand how to adjust pinion depth and all that stuff. And another question is I get how to adjust backlash. Now you're going to have some races that this is going to go in. Now, um, depending on what axle, what Jeep, whatever you're working on, sometimes the shims for your backlash is behind this bearing or you'll have your race and you'll have these shims that go on the outside of the bearing. Now I love when the shims are on the outside of the bearing when you put your carrier in because you can adjust backlash super easy with a dial indicator with these shims. If you don't have the shims on the outside, you have to press this bearing on and off until you get your backlash right. Now, I make setup bearings when the carrier has the shims underneath. So I can just slip the, the bearings on and off. So, as you can see, when you put this carrier in, 
So you'd go a little something like this. If you have the, the shims behind here, you would go ahead and roll it up in there, right? And then check your backlash. Um, you have to go to, you know, whatever your particular gear setup is, right? So how to adjust backlash is you put some amount of shims here and some amount of shims here until you get it right. And if it's too tight, you take the shims out of here and put over here and it moves this over away from the pinion like I talked about, right? To give it more gap for the oil to go through. And basically how I do that is I pretty much just stick it in there and go by ear. I use the stock shims and then I split it from there. If it's, it's usually, mostly when I do it, my stock shims are just a hair too tight. So I'll measure the stock shims and I'll do a little math and add a shim pack together and uh, go from there. I can't tell you what you're gonna be running. You have to do that yourself. So basically, let's just say I got my backlash correct with a set of shim packs like this. And then this would go over here and I got my backlash correct, okay? And this thing will be a little bit hard to get in the carrier. Um, I don't use a case spreader, so I just kind of pound these in there at the same time, it's a little bit difficult. But what we're worried about after we get our shims in to make sure there isn't no play this way. I'll go ahead and whatever shim pack I had, I'll, whatever shim pack that I have, I'll go ahead and add five thousandths on each side. That's not gonna change your backlash. That's gonna make it even and that's gonna put preload on these bearings. So make sure you do that um, or make sure you get this carrier in tight because if you don't, it will just, it won't be tight enough. It'll wobble around in there. It can chew up your gears, burn up your bearings and all that good stuff. All right, so now you understand how everything works, how your pinion works, how your backlash works and how the crush sleeve works. Basically super easy. The only problem is with this job is you're going to be taking this carrier in and out, the pinion in and out, in and out. And you're going to be, if you're doing it in your driveway, you're going to be rolling out of your, out from underneath your vehicle. You're going to have to be rolling back underneath of it. You're going to have to do this. You're going to have to get up, blah, blah, blah. That's the only reason that people don't like it. For one, they don't like the intimidation of it. They think you have to have some kind of special tools, which you do need a little bit. But two, it's a lot of labor work and um, honestly, a lot of people say they see why shops charge so much, um, but shops aren't laying on the ground like we are, okay? So they have a lift. It's super easy. I've done one on a lift uh, before and it's easier, but you can do it in your driveway. So now that you know how everything works, we can go ahead and be confident in our gear chains. We are going to be doing a gear re-gear video going to be in doing an in-depth video on one axle and I'm just going to show you on the next axle. It's going to be super easy now that you know everything and I uh, hope you guys enjoyed this information. I hope it cleared some things up. I'm Cherokee Ronnie. Stay dirty my friends.